All right, I'm with Jordan Black, CEO of Ramp Metals. Ramp is the symbol on the TSXV. And Ramp put out news Friday morning, June 6th. They completed their drill program at the Rotten Stone Southwest uh, property in Saskatchewan. 20 drill holes for a total of 4,000. 942 meters the news release was pretty comprehensive so we're going to dig into it with jordan uh jordan how are you this morning hey robert i'm, I'm good thanks for having me on again it's always great to uh, decipher these news releases with you uh, after we put them out okay so let's start backwards let's start with the rogue zone three holes were drilled at rogue they look like they're pretty widely spaced you showed some core from holes five and six at rogue tell us what you're seeing at rogue yeah so rogue is a, a very exciting um area of the project if we go back to the beginning of of the story of ramp we are originally targeting this big conductor in the middle of this um structural eye um eye structure that we compared to the nova bollinger right uh, so in this area you have a lot of structural folds and then on top of that, when we were doing our fall prospecting program, we hit 530 ppb of gold in the soil, which puts it at like top 2% of, of data in soil. So there's a lot of gold in the area, which is about three kilometers or so from Ranger as well, where we hit the high grade zone. Um, so we're testing these uh, structural and conductive targets here at Rogue. And we saved this for, for last. Um, Mind you, we would have liked to drill a couple more holes in there, but um, just based on our permits, we only had three left. And uh, look, we we drilled three in into Rogue, and and we like what we see so far. There's some nice uh, alterations in the core, and uh, we'll have to see what what assays say about them. Yeah, the core is interesting to see that that core from Rogue because it does look very interesting. Am I crazy to say it kind of looks like the Ranger One core, at least like some of it? Yeah, like you do have uh, some of those uh, those bands coming across, and it looks like you could see the alteration pretty clearly here. Um, so yeah, it's hard to say now, but uh, we we did like the look of the core. Okay, so so you would have drilled more at Rogue, but you were at the end of the program. You were on hole twenty. And it was just time to call it a a season and get the assays back. For sure, yeah, we would have loved to do a couple more. I think we were already out there for two months, and as you mentioned, it was the end of the program, and uh, you can only do so so many per season, right? And that's what I want to like kind of bring up here as well is just to remind everyone this is really the only um, it's only the second drill program ever on this site, and um this was a green field originally no one's ever walked the property but us we originally had our four holes uh in the property which three were in the rogue area uh and then one was in ranger which was the discovery hole um and then now we have 24 total across the site but in the grand scheme of things that's very early days for exploration okay so let's talk about ranger so you drilled seven holes at ranger in this pro oh you actually drilled eight so seven were drilled near ranger one in that proximity and then there was one big step out over a thousand meters to the northeast so you said that the big step out to the northeast was terminated at about 200 meters due to time constraints tell us about that why was it terminated due to time constraints and what were you targeting there yeah, we wanted to see like if that conductor looks similar to the big conductor under Ranger. Um, I think the guys were saying there there were a bit of mixed sulfides in there, um, but it didn't look as interesting as the original like Ranger target area. Um, and I think the rock got pretty hard, and and uh, that hole was taking a while, so we just called it at two hundred meters. Um, we didn't get to test the other conductors along that side as well um so I, as you know like each of these conductors could represent something different just because they're beside each other doesn't mean like one has sulfides versus the other with a quartz diorite package so we really wanted to see um how that uh looked compared to the other ones 
So is your intention at Ranger now to eventually go and test all the anomalies there to at least put one hole in each one so you you have an idea of what the anomaly is uh, you know representing? Yeah, for sure. I think you on this property we have to test uh, most of the anomalies that we come across um, as we're stepping out uh, more on Ranger on the next program. Okay, so so what's your your thinking? now in ranger i mean I, I you don't have assays back but you've had a month now to sort of process it and, and think about the these eight holes are there any new revelations i think the biggest thing with ranger was okay how how big is the quartz diorite package is it an intrusion versus coming out somewhere on surface based on the holes in the area so far it looks like it's it's an intrusion um, we hit that quartz diorite in, in all the holes, which the guys were very happy. Um, they saw a lot more of these alterations in, in, um, in Mafic dikes, which we're, we're very excited about. Um, whether things have changed, I, I don't think so at this point. We, we need to see those assays. Um, so I, I guess the only thing that we could probably confirm is that it's an intrusion versus, versus coming out into the lake or, or summer on site. And, if you remember, that's when we were prospecting, that's what we were looking for. Did, did that quartz diorite uh, come out on surface that we can chip away somewhere and get an idea of the cross section? Okay. So obviously everybody wants to know when we're gonna get the first set of assays. So can you give us any idea of when the core from Ranger was sent to the lab and sort of what your guidance is? Yeah, we're thinking we'll get uh, some assays in uh, early July. Um, we won't get them all. Um, maybe we get uh, a few back in the first couple of weeks and then they, they'll trickle in over the month. Um, so we, we, we didn't send them in all at once. We've been sending them as they've been cut um, and mixing holes in together. So um, yeah, they're, the labs aren't that fast, as you know. Um, but uh, we have an indication that uh, should be somewhere in early July. Okay, and with Rush, you also provided core picks from one more hole, hole 10 at Rush, which shows uh, what I can see there, chalcopyrite, right? looks like some semi-massive sulfides there. Um, so you, you hit this VMS system in several hole at rush yeah what's your interpretation of what's going on at rush and sort of you know what's your takeaway from the the holes drilled there so i'm not sure if everyone read the press release in detail but i think maybe rush was a bit overlooked on this additional press release here or this final press release on the program because um this whole 10 uh, was about 150 meter step out and uh we hit uh semi-massive to massive sulfides in this hole as well um in two layers uh, we hit it at 21 meters i think it was and then deeper at uh, 47 meters um so that just shows that uh it's not just in one area like this conductor can be um there can be massives under a lot of this conductor not the whole thing i think um it might be a little um broken up but uh hitting a 150 meter step out is is a good good sign yeah that yeah that is a good sign so that was a uh, uh, a pretty substantial step out from the first three holes that found this new vms uh zone at rush so during the off season obviously you're going to get the assays back that's hugely important but you also did a uh, a survey across the property to help you maybe see a little bit deeper into the earth what other kind of modeling and work will you be doing on the uh, during the off season to help you guide the drilling, you know, in the next phase? Yeah, no, great question. So yeah, we we did finish a geo um, another VTEM survey, HTDEM survey across the entire property. So this gives us a look now south of Rush, south of Rogue. Um, let's see if there's any uh, anomalies that kind of um trace down to the property i know on the regional data you can see some stuff but that doesn't allow you to to see uh, the conductors so hopefully we get that out soon during the off season after we get these assays here uh, especially for rush it'll be nice to do some downhole geophysics uh, that will help us connect the dots a bit on these step outs um, to get ready for the next program as well 
and uh, and then maybe we look at some IP around uh, Ranger, right? Uh, um, as you know, VTEM doesn't work that great for gold. We've we've been using it as uh, a potential targeting mechanism where, okay, if there's sulfides uh, near surface, are those correlated to the gold underneath? We don't know that yet, but that was one of our running theories. Um, and then also there's copper, uh, copper, silver, zinc across the property as well. So we want to make sure we're targeting those anomalies. Is is what? So yeah. So you're going to do IP possibly at Ranger. You know, do you feel like you're getting closer to putting together a model for all three zones and sort of you know getting a, a better idea of what's actually going on here and how the three zones correlate with one another? Yeah, I think uh, we're definitely going to have an idea um, of the the zones compared to Rush and and Rogue and Ranger. Whether we're able to determine if there's any correlation between Ranger and Rogue right now, I don't know. Uh, like I said earlier, we only got three holes in there, so we didn't get to uh, test the entire structure. Um, so we might need to go back there again before we can even determine if it's it's correlated at all to Ranger. Um, but yeah, having 24 holes total now in the property, it's going to give us a lot better idea. And I think we'll be set up uh, in a much better position this fall when we go back again. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the financing. So you you closed a uh, financing back in May. How did that come about and, and who took part in that? Yeah, look, it's always hard to uh, raise money in this space, right? You're uh, you want to raise money kind of when you don't need it. And uh, you're always looking who has appetite, what's the market conditions like. And uh, we are fortunate enough, we were talking to a couple people because we thought uh, with, with the new copper discovery, uh, it would be a great time to, to add some people in. And uh, one of our original um, major shareholders, Alex Gubbins, he, uh, he stepped up to the plate and, and took the majority of that um, charity flow through the the back end of it so that put us in a great position because as you know a lot of people like warrants and and all that fun stuff in this space but alex uh has a similar viewpoint to uh that i do and, and management does where warrants kind of create a, an overhang to your stock sometimes so we're able to do this financing again without warrants and i know not everyone's in that position but we've been fortunate enough to to raise money at the right time yeah, I mean, just just taking a step back here and taking a and thinking back to the formation of the company, the Ranger One hole, you know that that was serendipitous to say to say the least, uh, and just how you've managed the company over the last year. You're you're following a model that not many junior mining companies are able to sort of navigate, I guess, and that's keeping a clean share structure and raising money above uh you know a dollar per share so it's it's good to hear you say it's it's better to raise money sort of when you you don't need it and i think that's a a lesson that um can can, can be taken by many ceos in the sector and it puts you in a position of of strength so with that financing closed do you feel that you're funded for the rest of the year? Does that fund you for another phase? Yeah, I think this gives us uh, another phase this year, right? So we have, even after this program's done, uh, we're going to have over $5 million in the treasury, right? Um, so Garrett, Brett, and the guys, they did a really good job of, of managing this program. I think we uh, we did these 20 holes um, in and around $2.5 million. Um, so that really set us up in a good spot. Um, as Garrett mentioned in the PR as well, like we um, we're gonna do a summer prospect prospecting program, some ground geophysics, and then set up for a fall uh, drill campaign. Uh, whether that's five or ten thousand meters, that's yet to say, right? We need to see the assays back and and see where things go. And uh, we're we're definitely set for twenty twenty five. And we'll see um, see what uh, these assays bring. So you applied for a permit amendment to build a larger camp and to also permit a larger uh, program. 
of drilling at Rotten Stone Southwest, but you're still not sure how big the next phase will be because that will be guided by the assays. Is that right? Right. And we might want to do a, another smaller program like we just did, like 5,000 meters, and then kind of in the spring do that bigger 20,000 meter program, right? Okay, got it. What are you hearing about the overall camp? I mean, obviously, it's summer. It's we're approaching summertime. I think you could call it summertime now. Um, so, what kind of activity is going on across the camp? And uh, you know, what are you hearing? Well, yeah, we're we are based out of Mississippi, and it was getting pretty busy. Uh, lots of action in Saskatchewan. What I'm hearing is uh, really ramp ramp metals kick started probably the the biggest staking rush in, in Saskatchewan in, in decades, right? So uh, good good for the province and, and good for other uh, other projects in and around us. I think when we hit this, and, and I mentioned it earlier, this was a total greenfield site. And uh, we always had um, the theory of, of prospecting new targets. That's how you make discoveries like we did with, uh, with the Ranger target. And then additionally, um, this rush target, which can be pretty big on its own, um, that might might be its own beast if, uh, if copper does well. And uh, we think this is a whole new kind of regional play. And we've only explored, what, a quarter of our property, maybe a half. Um, we still have another 20,000 hectares to explore to the south. And if you look on the regional da um, geophysical data, it looks like there's some nice trends that lead into that eye structure. So there's lots of work to do. Like I said, there, we only did 24 holes total. And to get to the 80 million market cap where we hit last week uh, is definitely um, uh, something that we're, we're really uh, proud of. And uh, that we, we did such early in the company's um, stages. Yeah, it's a great story. It's very exciting. I'm rooting for ramp and and hopefully we're, we've got some good assays coming so we're about a month out from first assays from ramp jordan thank you very much for your time thank you robert have a great day cheers